Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera, and we on air, and Fina's the dog. Fina's the good dog. Yes, she is. All right, this is what we got going on. Yesterday, I put some square stock in on the bottom of the floor, and I made the corners to go around to connect to the post of the door. Um, I've got them all connected. I've got the floor welded in there nice. Got that floor welded in there nice. The post is connected nice. You can see yesterday when I cut the sills off, um, it had some repair, because you can tell, because it's got metal inside of metal and there's some rotten off in there, and I can tell underneath that they've overlapped it a little bit, and probably that was due to keeping it on the road. Um, I do not feel like this car was restored. I feel like they fixed it to keep it on the road. There's a difference, generally. There is a difference, generally. But basically what's going on is, I know that I have to put new sills on the truck, um, and the reason being is I need, I need this shape here to come around and match up with the cab corner. So what I've done, I've gone outside, um, and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to cut a piece of metal, place it on the back, but first, let's get, let's first is first, sometimes I get ahead of myself a little bit. Jolene look amazing today. She always looks amazing today. Me and Jolene went and got some metal today. We got some metal for the box, we're gonna make the box at a, at a 14, watch it sweetheart. We're gonna make the box at a 14 gauge and the reason I'm gonna go 14 gauge is because I do not wanna do any body work to the side of the truck. 18 gauge I feel is too thin, 14 gauge I feel uh, it's plate and we should be able to get a bend in that. We'll have to take it somewhere, probably no doubt in my mind, but um, that's what we're gonna make it out of. And it's soon gonna happen, but we have to get the back of the cab completed and the sills put on. So when I went out in my little pile of mess out there, my little pile of junk, um, we used to have a trampoline here. I think that's how I first hurt my back was on the trampoline. But the trampoline I kept because of the steel in it and the mandrel bends. So this is what I'm thinking. I probably can't get that off right now, but this is what I'm thinking. Take this with me. When I come around the corner for the cab corner of the truck, I'm going to need a mandrel bend to go in there. We know I can make one, um, but I want it at a round stock. And if I have the shape, I'll take it other than making it. So I have this trampoline. It's, it's made of galvanized. It's been out there forever. It's got a little bit of rust going on the bottom of it. But uh, basically, nothing else is worn through. I'm thinking of taking to making this sill out of other... I think this is inch and a quarter maybe. Not sure what, what size this is, but I'm probably gonna make the new sill out of exhaust pipe underneath here. I'll make that there, I'll bend that by hitting it on the ground. Then I have this shape right here that I can weld on the end of it to come around and, and, and go here, which my cab corner will come down around. So this will probably be welded on like that. And we get a nice little corner there that'll go around in here, we'll match cab corner coming down and come around and run along with the sill up to the front. I basically have to rip the fenders back off. I have to cut the door open. I have to cut the sill out and then start replacing the sill. But before I run this around to the corner, I want to know where the metal ends off so I can put this tight up against it and then roll it around. Basically what I'm thinking. So, also I have I'm going to run a piece of square stock off of this down. Let's just do it. I'm going to cut a couple pieces of square stock. I'm going to run them down each edge. We'll cut a piece for the center. I've been looking at the hump here. Maybe I'll make a couple pieces of square stock come down around here. See what happens. Also on the floor where this come around there was a hole there. I decided why not plug it off and weld it up? And that's what I did. I cut, made two pieces of metal, welded that one in there, welded that one in there. Everything is going excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a piece off here and weld it, getting prepared for the corners. We're going to, we're going to weld a four inch piece on the corner because that will give me enough for the sill to come around and connect on. And we'll run two fours, one on each side, what the hey. Welcome back and thanks for coming back. Let's do it again. Um, so, we'll get this cut off. Didn't break that, you sweetheart. Don't 
like that. It's gonna hold the longest in. Let's cut another one. I cut it a little bit long. It's better to be long than short. I can always cut it off when I run the sill around. So we need to run, I'm gonna run that around there like so. I'm gonna turn it. If I leave it like that, then I got a point there. I don't think I want the point. I think I want it like that. I'm not sure. If I run it like that. Nope, I'm gonna run it like that. Then the, when the metal comes around, I might cut, I'm going to cut the metal a little long, and then it'll come down and face on top of that. Then we can go for the corner after. So we'll put that one over there. Let's go over this side. We'll weld this one on. I'm going to pull this piece of metal out of the way. Isn't that something? Let's do it. Basically just taking you through all the steps that I have to go through to basically get to where I want to go. I'm going to put, I'm going to put something in, the, in between that so it gives me some distance for both sides the same. Nope. Probably a little heavy to hold, but. Ha, ah, too long. I just want some distance to put in between that so it's straight up and down with the chassis. And I have the same distance. And cut that off a little bit. Don't really want to, but don't want to, but I will. Cut that off. That's just a little piece of metal I cut off. So I'm just gonna lay that up against there. I'm gonna put that in amongst there. I'm gonna turn it. So we're, just give me a, something to go by for when I go do both sides the same. Probably should have hit it. Probably shouldn't have tacked it twice. The reason being is I want to make sure it's straight up and down. And I don't think it is. So I'm gonna to have to hit it with a hammer. My poor start, just like that, poor start. And the reason being is I should have. And that automatically takes it out of where I wanted it. So, cut one of the one of the tacks off. It's important to tack it and take a look at it. Get ahead of myself. That's better. I'm just going to eye this up now, like I always do. just a little tiny bit push it in tight where I want it and then weld it gas is off another good start all 
Alrighty. We're looking good on the on that part. And I'm gonna go underneath here and give her a shot. I'll grind that off so it's flush with the front other piece. Looks good. Take this to the other side. Alrighty, we're not going to do the exact same mistake as we did on the other side. We're going to tack it once and then take a look at it. it off that way. Back and take a look at it. It's not bad. Go for it. Kind of hold it in there so it's tight. So we got the same, basically I'm using this. So the square stock is the same distance away from the frame on either side. And the reason I know um, this is because the, the body's bolted on. Um, if I bolt it back down, that's the exact same place I'd want to put it back. So we got the same distance. We've got a quarter of an inch, that's what this is, on either side for this to come down. We need somewhere for the metal when the metal comes around to weld onto. Now, this can be cut off at any time. When this comes around or this piece comes around, it's got somewhere to weld to. And then we got our quarter panel come down on top of it. And we then we have our body molding line there. Alrighty. I've got that done. I need a piece for there. Let's do that. And then we'll sheath, we'll put a piece on the back and sheath it in. Let's do this. Probably can guess how I'm gonna do it. Find my straight edge. I bring my marker over. Alrighty. There's what I need. Let's cut it out.
metals hold me up a bit there. Cuts them off. Probably cut too much off. Yes, I did. That's okay. Just going to give me a pattern. Square stock. Let's do it. So basically I want to make that shape there that for the metal to lay against. I could weld it right to the hump itself, but I'm thinking if anything ever happened, if you wanted to cut the floor or something like that, you would have um, something to go to. So if anything ever happened, if I didn't like the floor, I still have this square tubing that I could shear all that off and make something brand new and come to it, I'd have something to go to. bit longer. That'll work. We'll just tack that on. We'll do it over there. Bum, bum, bum. Helmet's right there. going to tack the inside first so it don't take off on me. I need a ground. Got it now? Got it? Got it? Get the corners off, we should be good to go. Let's make another one so that when we cool down, let's change the disc. Could have left that one right on there, I suppose. I'm going to 
weld that up right here. Alrighty, let's make another one. I'll get a disc. You need one for each side. The price of metal is doubling, uh, and I cannot, cannot expect anything less, I guess. Um, everything else is costing more. We obviously know if if diesel fuel has doubled, then the price of everything else has to go up the exact same way. So you really have to be frugal when you're doing stuff. You really have to be. Um, so the way I'm building cars might come, might be more popular in the end. <laughs> Basically what I'm saying is uh, a lot more people, you know, if you want to play this game, you really have to be frugal. Good. Pretty damn good. Tighten it up a little bit. Good. Turn the welder on. Tack the, where I cut it at, at the ends. So don't take off. If I put the heat to it, if I run the heat down through here first, then it could take off. I want to connect all the places where I cut at the beginning so it does not take off anywhere.
get a pair of needle nose smooth that other one up on that other side there we'll smooth that one put that one in and there's a pair of pliers here hold that I should have just left it on the end I'm gonna leave that one on I'm gonna grind that one it's gonna be nice to see the back filled in so I have to fix the sills of the truck before I do the cab corners I'm, I've been trying I've been trying to, to do without um, but when I keep thinking about it and I keep going to it, I don't know, know where to end the, the, the cab corner off unless I have the sill there to weld the sill because I want, the, I want the metal to come down on the top of this like so all the way around so I can get my, my shape. Um, if I, um, what can I say? I can bring my metal all the way down around and then cut it off, but I think it would be easier to have this in place and then set the metal down on top of it to know exactly where I'm going. I think it would be easier. So, um, as I'm, you know, making a four-door car into a truck, I also have to repair it. <laughs> but we will. the hot one. I'm supposed to be doing this one. That's okay. Generally I would not, you would not grind sheet metal so it turns blue. Where this is uh, square stock, it's a heavier, um, there's a lot of metal there. Where it turned blue like that does not bother me too much, but I will go back and make sure it's not. So as I've changed the color on that, it means I got it too, I got it really hot. Um, I generally do not do that on sheet metal. I try not to blue anything when you're grinding. I missed a spot, I'm gonna fix it. And the reason being is I don't want anything to get inside of it. I'm not going to do the inside because that's going to be laying on the floor. There'd be nothing getting in that. Ba, ba, ba. Or I'm saying there wouldn't be. See a couple on this side. Scurrying a little bit. Okay, turn that off. Thank you, sweetheart. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Ooh, I thought I knocked that off, but I didn't. All right, let's go back to knocking this off. You want to turn that welder on just for a second, sweetheart? Please and thank you. Get a little pinhole in this one too. A couple little ones. Thank you.
That's it. Just had to fix it. That's all. Different grinder for inside there. I like the flapper wheel. Uh, I've got a straight, I got a hard backing on that 24 grit. It does a nice job when you're holding it flat, but as soon as you try to make a round corner with it, um, it's, it's flat and it's straight. It does not work that well. So I go to the flapper wheel. The other side. It's pretty, but it's not as pretty as Jolene. That's for sure. All right, now we get that in there. Now I'm going to do is cut some of the pipe. That so it fits better. Um, plug the zip cut in. We have a marker right here. And cut that corner off. I'm not going to take out the weld. I'm just going to take off some of this to get. Right, we got a nice piece in there now. That one can be welded in there just for putting the metal on to make it good. I could have welded the metal to that, but I just think that'll be just a little bit nicer and give me a little bit more. Just give me a little bit more. That's all it's going to give me. A little bit more. I should put this on this side and see if it fits. Not bad. Not bad. Stop it. Wrong one. Gonna try it. It's not bad. Could be bent a little bit more, but that's fine. I can weld that. I'm just gonna cut this end off. Ouch! Cut that a little bit off that tip. Just gonna cut a little bit off. I want to leave all the weld there I got. Beautiful. Okay. Let's turn the welder on. Don't need to mark nothing, I don't think. 
Probably my best bet would be to tack it in place and then zonk it on and see if I like it. One spot to hold it and then two it's on there. I'm saying that's the cat's meow. Let's weld her up. Gonna go on there and tack that in there. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna buff it back just a little bit so it fits a little nicer. Uh, my square stock's coming down. The metal's poked out just a little bit too far. You know what I'm trying to say. If I go to weld it the way it is now, when I grind it off, I've got a little metal, a little excess metal hanging out there. When I weld it up, then I'd have a big puddle of weld there. When I grind it all off, I wouldn't have much. So I'm just going to put my, put my sound back where it's supposed to be. Just going to knock a little bit off and then weld it. Just like I was pumping my brakes, trying to keep the heat down a little bit. I could run a bead all the way along there. Yes, I could, but let's face it. Let's keep the heat down as much as we can. I just think of it as you're going down the mountain and that you don't, you don't want your brakes to overheat. You would want to pump them. So as I'm going down the mountain, I'm pumping the brakes by pumping the trigger, trying to keep the heat down. Like you can do it if you want to, but basically less heat, the better generally. We really have something there that is strong as far as I'm concerned with this cased in. Uh, we got this cased in around here. We got that cased in around there. We've got our piece running down here in the corner. That's on the outside of the chassis. That's for the metal that comes around It'll come here. We got a piece for the, the, the sill to connect onto. That's good. Uh, so now we're just going to do a little measuring. We're going to cut a piece of metal and we're going to really tie in the back side quite quickly with a big piece of metal. And the piece of metal has to come down over. We had to cut it down over here. You know, so there is actually, um, you know, we have to cut it. Let's, let's check it out. Sixteen and a half. 
16 and a half, a little shy, six, 16 three eighths. 16 three eighths would get us. And we need it to be, I want it wider than, than the chassis. I want to bring it down and pass here and be able to weld it on this point right here. There's a point right there. It would be nice to be able to bring that metal down around and weld it right on there. Seems like a good pot to me. Three inch there. Let's do 53 inches. Got my marker. Now, I have to add, how many inches do I want to add for that? I want to add four. I put four on that. So 16 would make it, how am I going to do that now? Let's do this. Um, we'll do 16 and four is 20. We'll do it 20. I'm going to be cutting off an inch over there, so that's fine. If you know what I'm saying. I'm saying 20. I know it's 20 and, and 3 eighths or, or half. Um, I'm going to be cutting over an inch off that because it's down too far. So I'm all right with 20. 20. Hope that makes sense. 20. 20. It's almost like 4080 prime. Alrighty. Don't know as if I want to cut. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line. I say 50, 53 wide, so we made it 53. 53. I'm just making it. I'm making it bigger than I need to, and I think that's a good, good call. If I make it too small, then I got to cut another piece. 53. I allowed three inches on the other side. Four. What did I allow four? Let's just measure down here for a second. Sixteen. I'm going to do it. Sixteen and a. How about I do sixteen three eighths and cut the line? Sixteen three eighths, cut the line. Remember that, Chetty. to know how wide the chassis is. 47 and a half. 47 and a half. Or I'll just say 48 makes me makes it easier for me. Yeah, but that would be, that'd be fine because it'd be quarter inch, quarter inch, be 48, be fine. 48. What did I cut it? 53? Like one, two, three, four, five. So two and a half on either side. Two and a half on either side. So I'm going to come in two and a half. I'm going to do one up here. Two and a half. And two and a half. Five and a half.
All right, this, this is what I'm thinking. I did not do the center yet, and I can do that when I set it up in there. I can come up after. Once I pluck this piece on, I'm going to pluck that piece on, get it where this goes down over. This line here is the little corner that comes around here and connects onto this. Once I get this down, setting on down there, that's setting on on the other side. And then I can set it up against the back. Then I can just go with my marker and trace this. Trace that. Out. Baby likes when I make them noise, don't you, baby? Huh? All right, gotta get one of them wall from web snappers. All righty, let's rock and roll here. I can't give it all my talents. Huh? All righty. I'm going to cut this with a grinder. I know it's going to be some noise, but time I get that plasma cutter hooked up and die. All righty. I'm going to need another zip cut. I know that already. I'll forget it. I was hoping I was going to get it. I was hoping I was going to get it. Yeah. Now I'm going to place this on here. I'm going to mark the center out. I'm going to get it on both of the same sides. I'll mark the center out. But before I apply this piece to the back of that, I'll probably end up putting it through the roller to get a little bit of shape to it. And that way, when we put it on, it's going to like you basically. Um, how am I going to put this? When I do, when you see when I do a roof or something like that. I'll put it through the roller. That way there it has some shape to it. And then when I push it down to apply it, 
the roof still wants to come off. It has tension. If I just take that flat piece of metal and wrap it around there and weld it on, basically, you're not really, there's, it's not under tension. Um, I'm going to end up rolling it um, to give it some shape before I put it on. Um, I find that a flat piece of metal welded on is very easy to warp. Gonna to wanna to come off there a little bit, obviously. Obviously. I'm gonna grab a pair of clamps, clamp it on either side. Bum, bum, bum. Excuse me, Fina. Excuse me, Fina. The amazing dog, Fina. So, I'm basically gonna clamp. And I got some stuff to take off of this. So. I'm gonna pull it a hit. Why can't I pick that up? Oh, <laughs> I couldn't pick it up and I was wondering why. Like, why can't I pick that up? Did I get, did I get that weak? All right, I'm just gonna clamp that on there. Um, see how close I am there? I'll clamp it on, then I'll center it after. And I'll know, well, I'm basically there, I think, for centering it. Got to knock that off. I've got a little bit right here. I probably could knock it down some. It's not bad. I'm, I'm actually. I think I got about the same distance on either side. They laid black tape on the chassis. I'm not sure what that is, but whatever. Piece of metal. That looks like I got probably a quarter there. I'm just looking at the distance in between there. Basically, I've got basically the same amount. I'm going to have to cut that up in there a little bit more to get that. You can see where the point of uh, the square stock is there. So I'd end up cutting that right up that point and welding that there, there. Then I have square stock. So basically, right now I am just trying to get it in place for the center hump. Okay, that's all I'm doing it for. I'm gonna cut that out, get that center hump in there. So we're up on the square stock on the bottom, right on the money. Wrap a little right on, right on the money, right on the money. So I can feel the square stock right underneath that. So basically, I'm going underneath with my marker. Sure finishes it off back there, doesn't it? Huh? And if you come and take a look, this what a nice, you know, once I press that in, so where it's, where it's supposed to be, it's, we're nice and straight going along there if you come in here. And if you just kind of look across here, how it's got a nice shape to it, we're not, tucked out this way, we're not tucked in that way, we're nice and straight down. Basically, is what I'm thinking. That's what I'm talking about. Huh? You love me? Oh, I love you more. All right, I'm just gonna go underneath here. I gotta get down. Gonna knock off that. Nope, I'm just gonna get down. Get down. You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, boys. And that's what I always do. Do what I gotta do. All right, now I've got lots of weld to back there, so I'm gonna as I, as I mark that, I'm going to cut the black line because the black line is the outside of the pattern.
So that black line is the outside of the pattern. Actually where I want is on this side of the line, not that side of the line. Alrighty. To cut a circle with a grinder, you just want to use the very tip of it. I'm gonna do the best I can. Gonna use the flapper wheel, smooth it up a little bit. And I do not have to worry if I come up too far because you know why? Look at all the meat we got to weld to. A lot of meat to weld to, that's good. Don't want that one. That's got the hard wheel on it. I want the flapper wheel. When you're cutting stuff with a grinder or zip cut, everything becomes very sharp. The metal that's laying on the floor, it becomes very sharp. Cut in seconds. Have to be careful. But, you can get hit by a bicycle, or hit by a car driving a bicycle. I mean, sort of, you know, be careful. It's like, it's like the, the moral of the story. The young girl gets up in the morning, gets in a fight with her mother, they get in an argument, she gets all pissed off. She goes out and crosses the road and gets hit by a car. The moral of the story is, look both ways before you cross the road, basically. Um, I live in a town called Canning and we have so many pe people walking on the road. <laughs> it's amazing. When I was a young person, my father would tell me to go play in the traffic. And, and that was to be say like, you know, go get yourself hurt or something, you know, go play in the traffic. You know, when you walk on the road and you play in the road, you're, you're looking for trouble. But we got so many people on the road nowadays that I don't know if they've ever been told that before, but there's cars on the road. So I don't know. I don't know. Things have changed a lot. Um, I was always told to stay off the road, you know. Don't be playing on the road. Um, but um, if, you, if you drive in canning, you will come across somebody walking on the road and uh, will not get off. <laughs> Basically, you have to stop your ton truck, two-ton truck, to make sure that no one gets hit. Crazy. And if you're coming to a crosswalk, look at the car before you cross. Do not just cross. You're going to be dead right? <laughs> there's, there's no sense in being dead right. You may as well look and see if the car can see you before you cross the road. Do not play that game with a 2,000 pound car or, four, or whatever. Do not play that game. 
I'm right and you got to stop and I'm not looking. It's not, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I don't know why I'm ranting about that right now, but there's a lot of people that walk on the road with babies, with dogs, just walking on the road. It does not make sense. With groceries, get off the road. Get off the road. Alrighty, there's what we got going on. We got a back piece on there. I think I'm gonna, as far as I'm gonna carry it, I'm gonna roll it through the roller. I'll probably get Jolene to help me roll it. Do you wanna help me roll it? Or just, this is what we got going on. We got the back panel made. So this is gonna be, I'm gonna have to take that down a little further to get that, um, give me a little room there, I think. Or I might just butt weld it together. It doesn't have to be tacked to that steel. Um, the cross member going across here doesn't have to be tacked to that. I can go in on the inside and when I open the door, go along the inside and pull this up tight and weld that all along. It's got a nice shape to it. It's round. We've got the back going round. Um, we have a little bit of extra shape going on on this side. And that is for when it comes time to make these cab corners. I, I dare would not say that I'm probably going to make them out of a couple pieces. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to have one to bring a little bit around this way and a little bit around that way. I'm not sure basically how what's going on there um, until I get there. I could have even made this piece come around further and tried to wrap it, but I, I really want to get in to the, the sill first. I want to get this piece or get this round piece going here so I know where to wrap it to. Um, sometimes it's nice to know where you're going. Um, those without a plan are on a road to nowhere. And I, and I sort of got a plan to get that to come around and get something to meet. All right, everybody, thanks for coming back. We got the back panel made. We got it all. Um, it's almost like strapping a house where you put all your strapping in so you can put your drip rock on. You gotta strap the corner so you can get that, you know, you just strap one side, you gotta strap both sides so you can get that drip rock screwed on. Basically what I'm doing here is making sure there's something there that I can tack all this metal to that it cannot take off. Thanks everybody for coming back, I appreciate it. Like if you like, share if you like, and subscribe if you like. We'll be here tomorrow. We hope to see you here with us. Have a great day.